Hello everybody, welcome back to the Desmoworks channel and we're back on with the Ducati ST2 build but today is going to be a little bit of a special video on the build because I'm going to focus on fitting the slipper clutch. So I'm just going to make the video just about that and what I'm going to do after I've done the description on how this all goes together and what's needed, I'm going to try and film the installation in one take. So hopefully it will be a real-time video to show you how the slipper clutch goes together. So as you remember, engine is a fresh build, so the existing clutch is in there. So it's not a how you take out the old clutch and fit a slipper clutch. It's all about fitting the new slipper clutch. So let me just take you through what I've got in terms of the clutch and everything and what tools we're going to need to do this. Okay, so I've bought a K-Bike slipper clutch that come in this packet. So it's come with brand new hub bolts, which is really good. It's got an aluminium steel banded clutch hub. We've then got the slipper clutch itself, which is an open vented cover and a nice anodized red. And then you've got some of the fitting ancillaries. So you'll notice in here, there is a new spacer to go in. That's the existing spacer that goes in. So you have to change these out because this is much longer than the slipper clutch spacer piece. And that's because the hub height, the center hub of the clutch is different on a standard clutch to it is being on a slipper clutch. So if you don't use the correct spacer, it will sit out too far. And then there's two clutch hub nuts one for the standard gearbox for the earlier bikes and one for the standard gearbox on the later bikes so this tends to be for 1098s onwards and this should be for the early desma quattro and testa stretter engines i've then got a brand new friction and steel pack from adage and this is a seven a seven friction plate setup and they're aluminium so they should put less wear into the clutch hub so it gives me greater life and the steel plates now i have cleaned these of all of the preservation oil that was on them um, because otherwise you can impregnate the friction so just make sure you do that it comes with fitting instructions um, but i've fitted so many of these slipper clutches before not actually k-bike ones because it's the first time i've used a k-bike one but the process is the same all the way through, so I'm pretty comfortable to take you through this. But in here it gives you the full uh, strip out and installation process if you are new to it. And it talks about how to measure everything up, gives you some different uh, clutch layouts depending on whether you've got an 8 friction setup or a 7 friction setup. So, And then it also talks about how to make sure that you put in the uh, convex plate in the right way as well. So what are we going to need? So two torque wrenches, one to do up the 32 newton meters of the uh, clutch hub bolts. I've got a um, bigger half inch torque wrench that will take up to 185 newton meters for the hub nut clutch holding tool. Got a 32 mil socket for the hub nut. A T quick spin T handle with a 13 mil got a size I think it's four he wants to say yeah size four hex key and that is for your clutch spring bolts extension piece just so that I can get into the hub bolts and then a digital vernier so that I can measure the pack pack depth once we've got the clutch assembled to make sure it's in the correct position and then some blue thread locking compound for the hub bolts okay so let me just open up these packets and just show you the breakdown of the actual slipper clutch because there's more to it than what looks there okay so the clutch is now unpacked so you've got the pressure plate with the springs and their retaining bolts. There's a decent sized spider spring in there, which is 
really good because uh, normally in these sort of clutches you get quite a thin one that puts a very small wear mark in the hub and can start affecting its method of operation. Then you've got the hub. Oh, and this is, ah, oh, that's interesting. So I've got some spare balls. So this is the slipper element of the clutch. So you've got a ball and ramp slipper. So when that sits in there, the slipping action comes by the clutch disengaging by moving up the ramp and the balls just help that be smooth. Okay. And we'll just grab that and put that all back together. And there's a brand new bearing that sits in the pressure plate, so I've not had to install that myself, that came with it. Okay, just to point out what I've done before we get on to working on the bike, I have temporarily fitted the clutch slave and master cylinder so we can just test the operation once it's in. I know when I say temporarily because I want to replace this line with a steel braided line so that's why it's not run in the bike through the correct routing at the moment. Oh and there's another update the gearbox seals come and I just stuck that in there. Okay so hopefully that makes sense in terms of the slipper clutch itself the constituent parts of the clutch and the tools that I'm going to use to put it on. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get everything set up by the clutch side of the bike and then I'll try and do a single take with some commentary as I go through the installation taking you through how to install this slipper clutch onto the ST2. Okay so let's get on with that then. Okay first off hub Then blue lock tight. Thirty two Newton meters. Space a piece, make sure the seal is in place. Convex washer, so dished that way. Now the clutch hub. Spider spring back in. Back on with the locking tool. Bit of blue locking thread. Hundred and eighty five Newton meters. Check it's free to turn. Clutch pack, friction, convex, mark, mark goes in. Friction. Steel, friction, 
steel, friction, steel, friction, steel, friction, steel, last friction. two steels top hat silicon grease inside there clutch pressure plate tapped the top hat in off camera because it's just a little bit of an interference fit. Just nip these up. Zero. And we're looking for between six to seven and a half, six point three eight. Installation complete. Just quickly check the lever. Looking for about one to one and a half mil movement, which is that has got one completed K bike slipper clutch installation. Another little bit of red bling on the bike. I haven't decided on what type of cover to fit yet, so I've not got the cover to fit because I don't know whether to go carbon fiber or anodized metal, so I'm still trying to make my mind up about that. But I think you'll agree that that clutch is looking rather spiffing on the bike. So never used a K-bike clutch before, so first time. So I'll let you know how that goes when I first ever ride the bike. So hopefully it will it will go okay. Right, we'll call that video a wrap there. So Let's just have a quick chat. Okay, so that's it for this video today. That is the slipper clutch fitted to the Ducati ST2. So I've gone for a slipper clutch because I prefer the fact that it stops the rear wheel locking up. It's a hangover from racing bikes, so that's why I've not gone with a standard clutch. Um, the cost of that clutch, including the plates, was 540 pounds. So it's a, a sizable investment, but I think it's worth it. Um, the aluminium plates means that the hub will last a little bit longer as I stated earlier so all round I think it's a bit of a win. hope you enjoyed that video so we've got a K-bike slipper clutch now fitted to the Ducati ST2. Uh, the reason I wanted to just focus on the slipper clutch installation video today is because that process is pretty much the same for all open clutched Ducatis for the K-bike uh, slipper clutch installation. So if you've got a 748, a 916, 906, 998, a 749, uh, a 1098 if you're using a slightly bigger nut, um, that is how to install the clutch. Um, I've used brand new plates which made it, as you saw straight off, I was able to get the standard measurement spot on first time. Um, so I'm really chuffed with that. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, 
chuck us a like because it really helps the alg algorithms. Any questions or comments, stick them down below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button because there's plenty more content to come. We are almost finished on the ST2 and I'm just trying to weigh up what will be the next project. So I've got two bikes in the wings ready to go. Um, and there's a few people that are asking me to build engines as well coming up. So um, it, I might video one of those engine builds as well. So see you on the next video. Cheers then. Bye.